Hi everyone, Sherry here, and today I wanted to take some time to um, do a couple videos on my Juki um, DNU 1541S. I've had this industrial machine since July. At first I was a little intimidated, so I scoured the internet for um, some basic information, and though there are some good videos out there, um, I think that the videos were lacking some of the basics. So that is what I want to bring to new owners um, with this series of videos. Now, I do not claim to be an expert by any sense of the word. Yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert. Um, however, I have worked in the sewing industry for 13 years, still do, and I have... Um, I've been sewing since I was in uh, junior high or middle school as they call it these days. Um, and as you can see, I'm pretty old, gray hair, wrinkles and all. Um, so it's been a long time. I I've been sewing for many, many, many years. So um, very familiar with the domestic home machines because that's what I work on, that's what I sell, and that's what I teach my students how to use. Um, there, are, Like I said, there's some good videos um, out on YouTube about the Juki 1541S. Um, a couple that I can, I can actually link down below um, that come to mind is um, Sewing Gold, as Steve has done um, some very good short videos troubleshooting the machine and then um, there's another gentleman and I'm sorry I don't remember what his name is um, off the top of my head but I will link that down below as well he has a small or short two-part video on um, actually servicing and oiling the machine that is very very good so um, Without further ado, I'm going to get started, and I do hope that you find something useful in these videos, and um, get sewing. Thanks. So right now we have a view under my table, and you can see, um, let me see, i got to find something to point with. I'll get my screwdriver. Okay. So, first thing that I did was, over here, this is your servo motor, and I actually turned my speed down to about 350. Um, I don't like to sew fast, never have, even on a domestic machine, I've never sewn fast. Um, my OCD kicks in, and... I, I just can't do it. So, this is where you can change your speed. And another thing that I had to do was, this is going to be your knee lift. This is what lifts the presser foot. And I did have to make some adjustments to that. Uh, and that really was dependent on my chair and where I wanted this pad right here to hit me on my knee or my thigh. So you can make some adjustments here with this screw here and then there's one up here and then there's one down here. So you just have to kind of fiddle with them, loosen them and uh, get everything placed where it's comfortable for you and then tighten them up really nice. I did have to use a wrench uh, to make some adjustments with these. This just pulls out. See here, you have a little clamp here. That's what's going to hold it in. You will have to remove this when you lift your machine um, up out of the table for oiling. And once you set the machine back down, you just plug that right back in. Let's 
So next we're going to talk about needles and changing the needle. This machine um, uses the 135 by 17 and the 135 by 16. The 16 is for leather. Uh, the leather needles come in various points. Um, really good information on needles and um, threads actually and the combination of both can be found on the threadexchange.com. I will also leave a link down below for um, the thread exchange. I have been uh, sewing a few leather pouches lately and I know I need to change my needle. Now I know in the home market the um, changing the needle the norm is about after every eight hours of use. I uh, try to um, I try to apply that same knowledge for uh, my industrial as well. And since I've been sewing leather, I am going to put in a new leather needle. I'm actually using, um, excuse me, a 135 by 16 diamond point. Uh, I think the diamond point needle gives a straighter stitch for top stitching. And that is my reasoning behind using the uh, diamond point needle. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the thread that I was previously using. I'm going to do that by lifting the foot with the knee lift. And I'm pulling the thread from the needle. You never, even with your home base machines, want to pull the thread out in the opposite direction. Always snip your thread up top and pull through the needle. Next thing I'm going to do is you have this little screw right here and I'm going to try not to get my fat arm in the way uh, but I need to loosen this needle, I mean this um, screw so I'm just, well let me see if I can do it this way maybe that's a little bit better view so um, righty tighty lefty loosey and I'm just gonna pop that needle down pull it out now unlike your domestic machines this needle has a let's see if I can get that in here this needle not too well. I got my autofocus off. Has a round shaft. It also has maybe I can see it this way. If you look at one side of the needle, you see it has a little indentation right before you get to the actual threading hole of the needle or the eye of the needle. This indentation needs to be facing the inside of your machine. So I'm going to turn it so that it's close. And then I'm going to, oops, sorry you can't even see me. This is hard to do with my big fat hands. Okay, so I've got the needle up in the shaft. I usually use my fingernail to hold it up in there. And then I want to make sure that I have that little indentation. I believe that, if I remember correctly, may be called the scarf of the needle. Like I said, I'm not an expert, so be nice to me. When I feel like I have that relatively straight and pointing towards the inside of my machine, of my machine, I'm going to tighten the screw righty tighty. And that's as easy as it is to change the needle in the machine. And as I mentioned before, the threadexchange.com has um, some excellent information regarding thread sizes versus needle sizes. 
uh, so on and so forth. I can tell you the combination that I use. Um, I've been very successful with a size 18 and that is stitching vinyl and leather. I don't do a lot of heavy leather so the 18 has been perfect for me and I use the um, the number 69 or Tech 70 bonded nylon thread. I've tried the bonded, uh, excuse me, I've tried the polyester in the same size and I just found that it frayed a little bit too much for my liking. So um, I prefer to use the bonded nylon. All right, so next we will go on to uh, winding a bobbin.